Okay, so division is kind of the opposite of multiplication in the sense that you can think of multiplication when you first see it as repeated addition. Um, so in terms of multiplication, if you have two times five, That's two added up five times, or alternatively, it's five added up two times. So division, if you have, say, n divided by two, well, you can think of this as starting with n, and instead of adding anything, you start subtracting the twos until you get down to zero. And you have to subtract five twos to get from 10 to zero. And that can be understood, or that can be written as the statement that 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So one way to think about um, division, I'm not saying it's necessarily the best way to think about it, But the statement A divided by B equals C can be understood as saying that you must subtract B from A, C times to reach zero. And in this statement, A divided by B equals C, A is called the dividend, B is called the divisor, and then breaking our pattern of having D for division, C is called the quotient, a Q word. Now, If you ask this question, how many times did you have to subtract B from A to get to zero, the answer might be that there isn't any number of times you can subtract B from A to get zero, at least not when you're working with the whole numbers. I mean, 10 divided by three. We subtract three once to get seven. We subtract it again to get four. We subtract it again to get one. But we can't subtract it again. So um, at this point, we're stuck. We haven't reached zero, but we can't do any more subtraction. I'll write to this down. We can say, well, we did the subtraction three times 
but we didn't quite reach zero. We reached one instead. So after we did subtraction, one remains. And the number that remains after we do the subtraction is very sensibly called the remainder. Another way of thinking about division and maybe the one that's most real world applicable is that you're forming groups. I mean, if you say that 15 divided by 5 equals 3, you can think of this as asking if you have 15 whatevers, 15 apples, and want to divide them into groups of five. How many groups will you get? Now, if one, two, three, four, here's one group of five, one, two, three, four, five. Here's another group of five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's another group of five. So three groups of five. And the idea of the remainder can be presented in this way as well. Let's say that's from face this fifteen with a seven. So now you have one group of five, two groups of five, three groups of five, and then you have some apples left over, and there aren't enough leftover apples to create a new group. So that's what the remainder looks like when you're thinking of division as breaking stuff up into groups. If you have some stuff left over and there's not enough to create a new group, then what you have left over is the remainder. I said that that multiplication is kind and division are kind of related in the sense that you can think of multiplication as adding stuff repeatedly and division as subtracting stuff repeatedly. This relationship is reflected in the fact that any statement about division, or at least any statement about division where you don't have remainders, remainders makes this a bit tricky, but a statement like this is the same as a statement 
about multiplication. And in fact, this statement about multiplication is then the same as a different statement about division, which is what? Exactly correct. Thank you very much. So, just like when we had addition and subtraction, and we had what we called fact families, when we have multiplication and division, we again have fact families. And I mean, for, you know, if you're doing elementary ed, it's looking way into the future, but fact families are how you do algebra, essentially. You want to solve two times x equals eight. You say, well, this is the same as the statement that x is eight divided by two. Without further ado, because I think this is the part of multiplication that everyone, even adults, tend to struggle with, let's talk about doing division by hand. So let's say we want to divide, let's start with something like 723 divided by three. And let's look at this in a couple of ways. Let's do the long division algorithm as it's generally presented. And then let's ask ourselves, well, what's this long division algorithm doing? Why does this work? The algorithm, as it's traditionally presented, or at least as it was presented in school when I was younger, is as this. And I mean, this, this is definitely still done. You write what we call a crossbar. And then the reason, I mean, long division is an algorithm. It's doing the same things over and over again. And from one point of view, I mean, so's addition, right? You add up the ones place, you add up the tens place, you add up the hundreds place, and so on. But the division algorithm tends to trip people up in ways that the addition algorithm doesn't. And I include myself in this, so if I do something that seems wrong, it might be. So don't hesitate to throw up your hands. So the division algorithm starts with a division, which, I mean, might not seem very helpful, but again, you know, the addition algorithm starts with addition. You add the ones place. Three into seven. Well, three goes into seven twice. It's followed by a multiplication step. Three times two is six. And we write that number down here. Then comes a subtraction step. Seven minus six is one. And then 
A is ringing. That's how. That one drops down. And now this process repeats. Division, multiplication, subtraction, bringing down. Three goes into 12 four times. Division. Four times three is 12. Multiplication. 12 minus 12 is nothing. And traditionally, when we're doing subtraction as part of the, the division, we don't bother to write zeros in. Um, bringing down brings that three down there. Then division, three goes into three once. Multiplication, one times three is three. Subtraction, I'll write that zero in just because this is the end of the problem. And the way that I know it's the end of the problem is that we can't do a bringing down step. Another way to present this, this is not how I was taught, um, and it probably wasn't how, you know, kids are taught, because it requires a firm understanding of these ones and tens and hundreds places. But it might be sometimes clearer To think of it this way. We'll start the same way, three into seven, except the seven isn't a seven, it's in the hundreds place, it's seven hundred. So we're really asking, we're really putting three into 700. And this two that we write up here, that two is in the hundreds place, so it's really 200. So when we multiply three times this two, but this two is really a hundred. Now what we really get is six hundred. Then we can subtract seven to three minus six hundred. Now, three does not go into one, but three goes in to 12 four times. This four is in the tens face. So when we do the multiplication, instead of having three times four, we really have three times four. 40. Which is 120. Do the subtraction, we get 3. Now 3 won't go into this and it won't go into this, but it will go in to 0, 0, 3, 1. And I don't know, I mean, it seems to me that there is some advantage to doing, thinking of it this way. You're not doing this bringing down step. 
This bringing down step seems very mysterious to me. Why does it happen in long division? Well, I say that, I know why it happens, but um, the point is here, we're just doing division, subtraction, multiplication. There's none of this mysterious bringing down. Another way of thinking of multiplication, and we do have just a completely new algorithm. I mean, maybe not new to you, but, um, but another way of thinking about this division and it sort of relates to what I was doing on the previous frame. But let's think of having blocks. And again, if I had like a document camera hooked up to the whiteboard, maybe I would bring in our actual toys and we'd mess around with them. I did not mean to change that. I have no idea why I wrote 241. I guess I do. It's the answer. What I meant to write was 723. So let's say we have blocks. We have 700 blocks. Then we have two thin 20 blocks. And we have three one blocks. And what I like about this is that the long division algorithm tends to obscure what we're actually doing. I think maybe that's the reason everyone struggles with it. And what we're actually doing is trying to take a bunch of apples or whatever and separate them into groups. We have 723 apples. We want to put them into three groups. So we'll start with the hundreds box. And we'll think about this a bit. And we'll say, well, we have seven hundreds. So we can put two of these into each group. We'll have one left over. There's a hundred that doesn't fit into any of the groups. For now, we just won't worry about that. We'll put two of these in each group. And this is what you're doing when you're writing that two above the seven. It's in the hundreds face. And you're saying, well, the hundreds box fit into groups of two. Okay, so these hundred blocks fit into groups of two. What do we have left? I mean, some of these blocks up here we've already put into groups. Other blocks we haven't. Other blocks are still groupless. How many blocks do we still have? Well, and here's where I think it's kind of helpful to remember that this two is a 200. We have, we've used three times two. We've used up 600 of our blocks. One hundred, two hundred blocks went in the first group. One hundred, two hundred blocks went in the second group. 
100, 200 bucks went into the third group. So now we have these remaining blocks and we need to take these remaining blocks and we need to split them into three groups. In other words, we need to do another piece of division. We need to take the blocks we have up here and split them into one, two, three groups. So we have 100, 23 blocks remaining. We need to split those among the three groups. That's division. So that's why we're suddenly doing a second division step. Well, this 100 is a problem. We can't take it and break it into three, except that, of course, we can. I mean, at least in one sense, we can, because that 100 block. is the same as having a bunch of tens. So now we're taking these tens and we're putting them into each group. And again, this sort of requires some thought especially if you are a child who is learning this material for the first time. But we have 12 tens. We want to put them in the three groups. The pens go into three groups evenly, as a matter of fact. You can put four pens into each group. And because we're working with pens, the four goes in the tens place. And now we have we've put a lot of these blocks into groups, but we haven't put all of them into groups. What's left? Well, we took 40, four groups of 10. We have three of them. So we've used up 120 of the apples. 40 of the apples went here, another 40 of the apples went here, another 40 of the apples went here, 120 apples in all. So we have three apples remaining. There were 123 apples up here, oh, but three of those have now gone into groups. And again, so what the subtraction step is doing is saying, well, those tens, we put them into groups. We don't want to look at them anymore. And now we have ones, and these ones need to be put into groups. So again, we're doing a division step. We want to take those ones and evenly put them into three groups. When we do that, we get one one per group. Three divided by three is one. And now, how many blocks are left? Well, we had three. We put all three into groups. There are zero blocks left. 
and the algorithm ends. All of the box here we are done with. Um, if the division hadn't been even, that would have been represented by getting a remainder here. And we know it was a remainder because it would be less than three. So for example, so everyone copied this who wants to copy it. If I have 724, seven on three would still go into seven twice. 200 times three would be 600. Three still goes into 12 four times. Wait, did I outsmart myself? I don't See, so, oh, no, I didn't. Three still goes into four one time. Now, when we do the subtraction, we get a one. And three doesn't go into one. And there's nothing to bring down. If there were another number up here, if there were like a six, well, that six would just keep being brought down. And then three would go into 16. But there isn't. And if you can't do the division and there's nothing you can bring down that will allow you to do the division, then the process is over and you have After all was said and done, you went through this process, but now you have one apple up there, not splittable into three. Yeah. So that's what I think of as kind of the standard algorithm. I mean, maybe it's just Ego, the algorithm I learned 20 years ago is standard and all the others are weird variations, but I've never heard a different phrase for it if one exists. There is another way we can approach long division, the so-called scaffolding algorithm. And the scaffolding algorithm is basically repeating this block process, except it's doing it slower. The upside or the advantage of doing it slower is that we don't have to think about so much about the individual divisions that we're doing. Well, maybe this will be clearer when we see it. So once again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundreds, and two tens. and three ones. So once again, we're going to try to take these box
and we're going to try to distribute them into three groups. Now, when we did the previous algorithm, what I call the standard algorithm, we dealt with all of the hundred blocks at once. So we had to recognize, well, we have seven of these hundred blocks. We're putting them into three groups. So that's two per group with one left over. The scaffolding algorithm just asks, well, do we have enough hundred blocks to put one into each group? And we do have enough hundreds blocks to put one into each group. 700 is bigger than 600. So we put a hundred blocks into each group. And now the multiplication we do We don't write anything above the crossbar. The crossbar is just there for tradition at this point. Instead, we're going to say, well, we put a hundred into each group. So we've used up 300 of the blocks. So there are 423 blocks left. And the hundred blocks that I put into each group, I will erase. And now we ask the exact same question. Do we have enough hundreds to put a hundred into each group? And the answer is that we still would do. And let me make sure my note taking is good, or I'm going to regret it later on. We created a group of a hundred. Well, I guess I actually don't need to do anything else. So we just repeat this process. We uh, have three groups. We have one, two, three, four hundreds. So there are enough hundreds left to put each of them. Into a group. So each group gets another hundred blocks added into it. And that yellow line I drew was a red herring. I was thinking, I was confusing myself, as happens more often than I would like to admit. So we've taken um say this block, this block this block, we put them into the groups. So that's 300 more of the blocks that we have used. And again, the multiplication we're doing is now this three times this 100. So how many blocks do we have left? Well, the hundreds that we've put into groups, we get rid of. So now we have 123 left. And we say, well, do we have enough hundreds to put one into each group? And the answer is no. There are three groups. There's only 100. 
So here's where we make change, as it were. Um, unfortunately, this is also the point where this, so I think, algorithm is going to become kind of tedious because of the way it works. We'll now ask the same question about the tens that we asked about the hundreds, bless you. Are there enough tens to put one into each group? Well, yes. There are enough tens that we can put a ten into each group. Ten times three is thirty. We do the subtraction. We get ninety-three. And again, what we're doing when we do the subtraction. As we're saying, well, we took three of these and we cut them up and we put them into the groups. So those threes we've already taken and we pushed them down there. And now we're using subtraction to remove them from up here. So we have enough tens to put a ten into each group. Well, once again, we do notice what notice what the numbers I'm writing in the middle column are. By the way, um, when I'm done with this, I'm going to add all of them up to find out how many blocks there are per group. So. 10 times 3 is 30. 63. Again, what we're doing with this subtraction is we've taken those, we've taken three tens, we've pushed them down below. So we remove them from up here. Are there enough tens that we can put a ten into each? And I, uh, I said that this becomes kind of tedious. We're seeing that, and we're about out of time. So I'm going to have to sort of wave my hands. We keep doing this, and one by one, all the tens go into the groups. And one by one, all the ones go into the groups. And every time we add something to one of these groups, whether it's a hundred block, or a ten block, or a one block, we jump that number down. And at the end of all of this, our answer isn't going to be written on the whiteboard. To get our answer, we'll have to take those and add them all up. Okay, so I will see you Wednesday. I'm not sure exactly what we're covering. A lot of the middle part of the book we're going to either skip or just cover very briefly. So, if you have homework for me. Sorry. Oh, thanks. It's just when we're going to be on. Okay. Um, I will not be able to do this. My search didn't work. Okay. Um, where can you find the recorded um, videos on Canvas? Yeah. So let's. Oh,